What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and if you are checking out this video, perhaps you saw part one of this where I did an unboxing unboxing of the NEX or NEX PTG, I guess paint thickness gauge by NEX or NEX Diag, which I'm sure stands for Diagnostics. So I, in transparency, was sent this to take a look at it and be able to get my opinion on it and I can already tell you just from handling it in the previous video I'm super super impressed and then I went out and got this because I felt like I had to do a comparison the plan is if everything goes well I will be doing a carbon fiber to carbon fiber on the new version comparison we'll see how that goes fingers crossed could be a really cool video to see just what the upgrades are and this time instead of using my cell phone I decided we're gonna roll with my iPad Air and I haven't connected anything yet uh, so what we're gonna do is I have our 2021 Kia Sorento in the garage I'm gonna shut the garage door because there's I think there's people out there having a party a siesta fiesta having a good old grand old time good for them so that's just gonna disrupt my video okay it's gonna disrupt the video and I ain't about that. So what we're gonna do is I cleaned this, I uh, rinseless washed this all actually with, I can't even show it to you because it's hiding, hyper clean, um, it's called Eco One. Yeah, that's what it's called. I don't even know what I'm using anymore. It's how much stuff I have, it's crazy. So I just used that and it's a rinseless waterless wash with their slick product into it. So it's like a streak free, pretty cool. I'll do a video down the line. This was like my second time using it. And um, can't really see anything in here. I can see it, you can't, whatever. So what I'm gonna do is take all four of these gauges, get a general idea of what numbers I'm getting on, for instance, maybe just this side of the hood or this side of the fender, max, right? And then afterward, I'm gonna take the um, professional version and I'm gonna go through the whole car and see if I can try to, without getting too much into the directions, just seeing how intuitive it is for me, just you know, a little prosumer action here, uh, go through and see if I can do a report and see what actually goes into that and do it live, well, live, so we can just get an idea of the features of that. Um, I'm very impressed with the gauges so far just from looking at them and I'm hoping that continues toward what we're about to see with the actual usage of them. We're gonna see, so that's on. And this would like to use Bluetooth, I said sure. And just like with my cell phone, it connected extremely, extremely fast. And again, for right now, I, uh, I don't want it to, you know. So what is this? Do you want the application to detect galvanized services? So, I don't need very fast readings. I guess I can change that later on. So I'm gonna click yes. So we have all readings. And like I said, these are all calibrated. Uh, if you wanna see the calibration processes for all of these two here, you can Google them. Uh, just for the sake of being you know, thorough, this is a Highline Meter 2. I've had this thickness gauge for quite a while. This is a VVV group. Now, just to tell you, the same exact group, uh, gauge, the same exact one, like almost perfectly, button layout, everything, except colors and names are on Amazon for like 50 to $100. Um, there's nothing really proprietary about it. I think people are just relabel, uh, rebranding, relabeling this gauge and whatever. If it works, it works, it's fine. It's kind of popular with some of the uh, people I follow, the detailers I follow on YouTube and Instagram. But for right now, we're gonna do a couple measurements with this gauge and these two, and then I'll connect this gauge. So we're gonna see what we can get. All right, so let's try to uh, use this and we're gonna start over here and I'm gonna do this right in this area. We got a 78, so that's what it says, right? And I'm going to come to this area, 101, and then right here, here, I'm going to do this area right here, 99, I'm going to go in the middle, 
121. I'm going to go right there. Show 99. So I did five measurements. The highest we got was 121. Average is 100. And the lowest right in this area was 78. So pretty consistent bug. <sighs> Get out of here. Pretty consistent, right? So let's go with this one. I've had this cage for quite a while. And we're going to just put this on here. So this thing is set to um, which I think is microns. Let's do that again. See, now this says there's a hundred when we know that the other one said 78. That's interesting. This one says 120. This one says 117. 139. We never got a rating that high. And 119. 139 is pretty off the charts high. Now for this, all I had to do is turn it on. It goes through a little countdown sequence. So we're going to start out again over here. 92. I'm going to go here. 108. 109, 130, and 112. For some reason, that corner is reading higher on this. So we're gonna switch to this, but so far my take on the situation is, I don't know what gauge is telling the truth. I'm gonna assume that this one is a lot more accurate. Now, I disconnected this and it says, Disconnected from that gauge, do you want to reconnect? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this and turn this on. And I'm going to click yes and see what happens. I'll see if this connects just as fast. I think it's connected to it already. Alright, so we remember that was 78. Now we're going to go back to that spot. 74, 90, 96, 123, I think, and 99. Something over here, so Here's how I, uh, okay, here's my opinion on the situation. I feel like with all these gauges, you're going to get the uh, dot plus or minus ratings. It's, it's uh, kind of like an inevitable thing. But the way I feel is when you're using this as a tool to measure whether or not it's safe to polish on clear coat. Not like a foolproof thing by any means. You know, this is just a gauge. Obviously, we go through and we're going to check the door jams and see what's not uh, clear-coated. And I don't even think that's foolproof. I mean, it's it's kind of like also you got to take into account how new the vehicle is, the type of vehicle. There's a lot that goes into it. Really, there is. And, and there's a lot of um, experience that only an experienced paint correction expert, uh, which is not me, or paint correction um, detailing professional, which is not me, or even just an auto detailing professional, which is also not me. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it with years of experience that I am not going to have, and this tool just helps push. There's people that don't need these, and, and God bless them. They know. They can just look at things, and they can just tell with their cues what's going on. And, you know, they've got a lot of years under their belt you know, they know all about the GM Black. I haven't even polished a GM Black, but from reading and hearing horror stories, I know about GM Black. And you probably do too. So, it's one of these situations where I would rather my gauges read on the lower end and tell me in the 70s than tell me in the 90s. Because 
it's gonna possibly, potentially give me a false sense of security. It could tell me that I have more to work with than I actually do. And I don't like that. So right off the bat, I would rather have this gauge and the Blue Pro consistently telling me lower, but sort of in the same ballpark readings as each other. Cause you know, mind you, you you're not gonna get, I. The, the odds of me putting this on the exact pinpoint same spot. Paint going on panels, it's never going to be like 100% consistent. I could run this machine all over this panel and it's going to be, that's 110. I'm going to move it just here. That's what I mean. Like there's t 10 difference, but it's not going to be 20 average on both machines in that same area. Now, I'm going to go back with these machines and just double check real quick. Remember, this was telling me in the 90s, still. You know what I mean? And the scary part is... It's consistently like eight high 80s, 90s, and the other ones are mid 70s, low 70s. Like even this, how is that a 101? You know what I mean? Nah, see, as of right now, for me going forward, just so far, this is going to be what I would rather use. Not even just the interface of it with the app, but reading on a lower scale, not giving somebody false confidence is where it's at for me. So, as I said, we got through that part. You know, I'll go back to these gauges and, and do a little testing on um, other panels too at some point. But let's reconnect this. And let's see what we can do. Um, let's actually do a report. Let's see if we can figure this out with every light in the world pointed at you. Let's go to reports. All right. Let's click down here where it says create new report. And actually, let's get out of my light because it's starting to uh, annoy me. And I'm also going to shut that door. So says type. I mean, we don't have to get too crazy here. Um, PDF. It says professional. I don't know what the difference is going to be. External. I don't think there's any option to do. Um, saying vehicle data. Model. Kia. Sorento. And let's not go crazy with the engine capacity, the VIN, year of production. Let's go with 2021. They don't have 2022 yet, hopefully, you know, with the updates that they have consistently doing. Um, hold to turn on and off. Okay, so it does save that. That's fun. So you could do photos. So if we wanted to, for instance, click to do a photo. Oh, you can add photos. Oh, and being on a tablet is kind of cool, you know, so I could just do, took that picture. This is just, you know, on the fly stuff, and we're going to click use photo, and you can actually, wow, okay, so you could crop the image. Okay, whatever, let's, let's, uh, let's crop it a little bit like that, right? And we're going to click add. You can put a comment in it. Let's just put testing. And, um, yeah, so now we got photos that save there. That's cool. So exterior measurements. Now it's going to start with the hood. So we've got a gauge connected. We're going to go through and see what this says. So this is pointing here. So right here, we're going to just put the gauge down. I guess that red. So wait, what am I supposed to do? Wait, 
what? Hold on. Clear. So, do I have to... Oh, you need two freaking hands. So what you're going to have to do is hold it there and then select the record button. So then when I go back, it says that it got the reading. Um, okay, that's going to be a little bit more tricky here. Okay, so we're going to click here. And it's giving me a reading. And it lights up in green. Okay, we're going to go in the middle of the hood. Let's try to keep this in the middle here. Let's go in the middle. Let's give me a number. And I record. So, we got three different things. Um, as far as going through, knowing that I need two hands now. Um, not a deal breaker by any means. It's very simple to do this. Uh, especially if you have a cell phone in your hand. So, maybe a tablet's not as genius but this tablet what's cool for me is I have a little case here so I could easily hold this tablet and push the button um, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna just do as many measurements as I possibly can and then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna see what we could do with the report itself and see what it kind of looks like okay so that really didn't take all that long. I will say that I probably would. Oh, I almost got that fly. I, I almost just B I T C H slapped that thing. So I would say going forward, I would probably be more inclined to use my cell phone. I think that would be a little bit of a smarter thing. Is that a dead fly? What the hell? But I did go through. Now, I did run into a funny uh, situation. The roof is giant panoramic glass and there's only paint back there so when it was asking for readings I left that blank that blank and the middle blank and I just read the two back so it's going to show a huge red section on the roof except for the two backs which are paint um it's going to happen on certain cars so now that we've gotten to this point like I said I did all the measurements right so I'm going to go back I'm going to click save and see what happens okay need the name I guess I'm just going to put Kia. Is that what I do? Are you sure you want to save the report? Yes. Okay. So now it's gone and done. Did we did that. So you can delete it. You can go back and edit it. Or you can share this. So, um... You know, just for shits and giggles, I'm going to email this to myself. I just emailed it to myself now. I feel like you can send that to yourself and... Or to a customer, a PDF document. What happens if you open it up in Chrome? Okay, link cannot be handled. Fine. Okay. So, I got my email here. And I'm going to tap it download. We'll see what we got. What's cool is, hopefully, it's a PDF... Now look at this. Hold on. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Guys, I, I'm, I can't even right now. Okay. So you can name the report name, whatever you want. And it tells you readout dates, if it was edited, serial number of the gauge used, type of measurements. And it's got multiple pages. So we're going to go through. And here we go type of vehicle. And then if you entered more information, obviously you're going to get more information. Any comments? It's going to have down here. So, for instance, if I said, okay, vehicle um, has XYZ scratches, and I take pictures, and you really want to cover your ass when you're detailing a, a car, especially for a customer. For me, I have a detailing business on the side, and I just haven't, you know, gotten into activating it yet like a, like a superhero. I'm like a sleeper cell right now, so we're going to see what happens. So, look at that. It's got the... The next diag. This is so cool. And I'm not even at the report yet. And it's so cool. All right. So we're going to go down. T Come on. What is this? This is sick. This is ridiculous. Okay. 
So something means skip, whatever. So now this is going to go through. It tells you the fender, left front door, left rear door. So this says the whole left side here. It gives you the numbers, and it's going to show you green, yellow, red, if it's like safe uh, panel readings and, and whatnot. Look at that. That's the right side. Remember I told you on the roof, we had three, because it's a panoramic roof, we had three things, so we didn't even measure on, on that part. So the roof, um, it tells you minimum, maximum for each area too. So it's going to say for like the, the right front fender, for instance, we had a minimum of 87, maximum of 108, median of 94. So pretty consistent numbers all around from what I was seeing. Trunk, it goes through. Um, I didn't do the internal uh, section, so that would be like the door jams. You know, not, not that I didn't want to do it, I'm just a lazy person. And then you can even do the inside of the engine compartment. I don't see where that would help us. I mean, maybe if we were a body shop and we we're talking about complete painting and I, don't, I really don't know how I would even measure anything inside of the trunk by, uh, unless it was just completely stripped, but it's not. So then you go through, um, now it tells you highs and lows, green, like safe, and obviously the red spiked because I had three things that I didn't read. No internal measurement charts. I didn't have any information I put in for the tires. Uh, symmetry, numbers so it's going to tell you the differences too this is cool so the left fender the right fender it's going to show you the same position just on the opposite side what the difference in numbers are so that's pretty pretty crazy that the right front fender and the left front fender had a difference of 12 in one spot but i guess in microns and in in a, a painting situation that's obviously completely possible so the highest difference is right here in the pillars one of them was 29 difference, but again, I'm not a painter or no. And then look, that's cool. So it's, it can't click it and make it bigger, but that's why you could crop in. So if you want to take photos of damage and then you've got notes that you could put, this is really, really, re this is a nine page report. I know this video is going to be a little bit long, but let me just, t I, I gotta, I have to stress, I'm not even a, a professional detailer. And this is getting me excited, okay? This is a nine-page report, a PDF thing that I did. This is me in here, not a professional anything. I, I don't have a professional anything right now. I have every professional supply and, and product, but I'm not operating where this would be of use yet. So I have access now through this purchase of 199 you don't understand $200 i could tell you right now this gauge was more money than this this gauge right here this little tiny one that i purchased years ago this little one that's probably just not where it's supposed to be and this one well this is very cheap but you get what you pay for okay $200 if you want to be bougie you could go through and splurge, and I think it's like 350 to 380 whatever. I'm not going to try to push and persuade you to go out and get a carbon fiber one. I'm going to save that for the next video after this when new carbon comes out. Because I have a feeling this company, just from seeing this tech, from seeing the presentation, from seeing the quality that I'm seeing, the, to seeing how it's integrated, and it's, it could be in your smartphone, your tablet. You can email this to a customer. This looks, stinks, and is amazing of performance professionalism okay this is crazy I'm, I'm hyped i'm sorry i'm very hyped you could go through and you know some people don't even know anything outside of colors so they're not going to know what these numbers mean they're going to know what green yellow and red mean we drive cars right there's slow down stop and go so as a detailer you're going to be like oh the trunk full on go now what if these were actual numbers actual readings for instance and it was one of those situations where it's like um I'm going to actually show you an example of something here. Now, we're used to seeing green. I'm going to just put this here. Now watch. Hold on. I think if it goes below... Here we go. Now, you saw that color. It went yellow. Something here with the panel. Yellow means paint layer is too thin. So, this tells you... If it's original, and and you go through, 
and you can keep clicking and you go through the whole car. Report or not, it's it's awesome. So this is this is this is legit. This is a legit thing. Um, I think this is something that everybody needs to look into. Now, I didn't go through the whole app. That's not my intention. All I know is, oh, look at this. You can go through and see all the measurement history that you did. So see how we did two here? Can you click on it? Oh, you can delete it if it was an accident or you don't want your customer to see any of that. Measurement points. So I can click, wait, man. Oh, so wait a minute, look. So if it's an SUV, that's where it's gonna tell you to get some measurements and I'll say it's a hatchback. Um, what the hell is an estate? Oh, a wagon, okay. And a sedan and a coupe. Okay, so it changes the, the picture. Cabriolet, nice. And a van and a pickup. That's pretty stinking cool. So you can go through, you got all these settings. Um, again, I think, I'm going to look into this, but it's saying in the beginning it um, gave you a, a prompt. If you don't want to have detection of galvanized steel, you turn it off and you'll get quicker readings. Night mode? Oh, oh, come on. Wait a minute. What? The app just got significantly better. Dark mode is always better for me. Jesus, come on. And then you can go through and calibrate it at any time, as you saw in the, if you watched the previous video. So dark mode, and then you got help, you can contact them. That's a company you can stand by, where they, they have, hey, you have an issue, contact us. You can do synchronization, you can do uh, gallery. What is buyer's guide? Okay, so wait a minute. Evaluate the condition of the paintwork. So it's gonna, uh, okay. So you got a checklist to go through. Evaluate the condition of electronic. So you're gonna go through this checklist when you're going to buy a car. So it gives you like a, a guideline to help you prepare a car for, I, I, this, is, it, this is just a solid, a solid app. It's a solid gauge setup. Uh, I'm extremely over the hill about this. I'm sorry, I wanna do a couple more readings with that. So I'm gonna turn this one off. I'm like over the moon, over the hill, over the ant hill, over the, over the everything because it's carbon fiber. And I know it shouldn't matter and it shouldn't be such a bougie situation, but it is, it really is. Okay, so I was getting ready to end this video and what I wanted to do was just go back and do a couple more readings with this carbon fiber gauge, the gauge I'm most excited about, obviously. Um, I'm gonna show you something here. So I'm gonna turn on the Blue Pro and it says search, right? Connects super, super quick, connects right away. So say I turn this off. This, is, this was working just fine a few minutes ago. It's gonna say disconnected from that do you want to reconnect? I'm gonna click yes, so it's searching. So I'm gonna turn this one on. Now you saw how fast the other one connected. So I turn this on, and this gauge is on. And it's saying searching, and it's still searching. And it's not, it's not finding the gauge. For some reason, it's not finding the carbon fiber gauge. And I don't understand. It was just connected because I wanted to go through, just get a couple more clips of, um, you know, getting a couple more carbon fiber readings and saying the meter's not found. How is it not found? I'm gonna turn off my uh, Bluetooth. Turn off Wi-Fi again. I'm gonna turn on Bluetooth. Let me turn it, okay. I turn the app off and I turn it back on. And this is still connected. It's still turned on, but it's not connecting saying searching I'm curious so this is on I'm gonna leave this turned on right there I'm gonna turn this on too search and it connected to this one right away right away it's the same gauge it's just the housing let me go through let me close this Bluetooth is off. So we're gonna turn Bluetooth on. All right. 
That's weird. It connected it right away. So is it is it just is it just my uh, my tablet? I mean, it's going. I mean, it's it's doing. Let me uh, let's try to mess around. You know me. I'm not gonna fully endorse something without telling you the pros and cons. I did read somewhere that somebody did say that they um, were losing connectivity um, during reports and stuff, but I didn't have that issue at all with the Blue Pro. So let's try again. We're gonna switch to this one. Turn this back on. Yes. And it connected right away. Instead of us going back and forth to the car, let's just do this like. Okay, so it connected right away to the gauge. So let's go do it again. I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna turn it off. Again, it says, do you wanna reconnect? And we're gonna go back and forth. We're gonna go right back to the carbon fiber again. And we're gonna say yes. And it connected right away. All right, I don't know if it if it's something with it being on the tablet. Is it the case? How could it be the case? I mean, let's be real. How could it? maybe it's something with the magnet on the case? So, not searching. I'm gonna turn this on. Connected. Not connected. I already I know this video is too long, but it's fine because you know how I go. I'm not gonna half-ass it. I get it. I'm not gonna have viewership going through the end of the video for everybody. Uh, it might not be everybody's cup of tea, but I'm gonna shortchange the people that actually want to sit here and listen to this. Uh, I get it, you know, YouTube just is not showing my videos like they used to. I used to get thousands of views and now I don't. It's whatever, it's fine. But I'm still gonna be pumping out some kind of content and I'm still gonna be doing justice to the way I wanna make the videos. And the way I wanna make these videos is be, you know, giving out the amount of information I feel is sufficient for the, the content that I'm producing. And right now, this is what we have. So, um, small issue here that I'm going to look into, possibly make a follow-up video um, to see why the carbon fiber was having issue, but the cheaper one, no issue. Do I recommend this gauge? Yes. Wholeheartedly, yes. Uh, the carbon fiber, I'm on the fence, but again, they are coming out with a complete redesign, and, you know, I'm going to reach out to the company and find out, you know, if there's any... Um, issues reported about uh, tablet use or maybe just tablet use is not super recommended because my our phones are so big they're they're phablets so it's not like a i mean yeah i guess it is a lot bigger of a thing but it's not something that is overly necessary i could totally do it with the phone and have no problems so that's my recommendation if you're going to get this gauge click down below in the description and go support the guys that sent me this gauge, click on their website, order from them, let's get them some business because this gauge is amazing, that price is amazing. Is it worth $199 and whatever tax shipping? I don't care, absolutely. Shadow of doubts missing, gone completely. This is totally 100 and million 56,000 uh, friggin' Elon Musk percent. This is totally worth it, yes, go there. Click down below in the description for the link I'm providing you and order this gauge from there. This is the USA distributor for this gauge. This is the place to get it. It's a great price and I think you're going to be extremely satisfied. I will revisit this and we'll do another video on this if I find information about the tablet and especially when the next carbon fiber version of this gauge comes out. I'm eager to see what they're actually changing or upgrading um, to make the carbon fiber different than this because as of right now, and I get it, you're paying more, almost double for carbon fiber. Yeah, I do it. I would do it and I did do it. 
So that's cool, but is it worth it on a business standpoint or is it worth it with the reports or usage? No, it's not. It's just not. But this is. This is totally worth it and I think you should go get it. I totally think you should get it. It's a 100% stamp of approval from me. Okay, real quick, I had to add this in because everybody... Because I preach about transparency and the word honesty and honestly and honest are in my name. So we, we have to uphold this. We have to uphold this, okay? So whether it's my fault or a manufacturer's fault, I don't care if parts are coming to me for free or big discounts or I'm getting kickbacks, kickbacks, which really usually isn't a big deal. Um, I'm always going to give my honest opinion, just like I said, okay, well, this is one of those situations where this gauge wasn't connecting to my tablet, and I'm going to show it, and I'm going to record it, and I'm going to also try to figure it out. Now, I never got exactly to um, writing to the company because I wanted to figure this out on my own, and I did figure it out on my own, so I'm going to show you what was going on here. Let me first demonstrate this. We're going to turn on the gauge that we knew, which was connecting. Okay. I'm going to turn this gauge on, and I'm going to click here, and I'm going to click measurement, and it immediately connects, okay? Now, I think what happened here is I said something like, do not ask again. If you have multiple gauges, like I'm going to do, or potentially going to do, don't, don't select anything except for no. So I hit no, okay? Now, I can use this gauge and it's going to read everything. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to gently place it back there because I love that gauge. And I'm going to turn this on. This is the one that wasn't connecting. And I'm going to say right here, do you want to connect another gauge? Sorry for the light. And immediately it connects. So I figured it out and I just wanted to show you real quick. But let me show you what ended up happening here. So I went to this menu here and I went to settings. And what I ended up doing was, I guess at some point here, this, where it says, add a meter as default. So, let me show you what ended up happening. I guess once I connected to a meter, and went through... It's say it right here, default meter. So the only way you're gonna be able to get that to read any other gauge is if you click remove and okay. That's what ended up happening. That's why it was working flawlessly on my um, other setup and not on my tablet. All right, I'll turn this on when it's not connected to the other tablet, which would be nice. And as you can see, there's nothing wrong with the carbon fiber. What I can say is, like I said, this. This message pops up here, and it's going to say, you always have to select this. Okay, for whatever reason, you got to click that every time. You're going to have yes to set as default, no, or don't ask again. So I always just push no for my usage. For you, um, if you're going to just have one gauge, uh, you know, just select it as a default and, and have whatever you want. But as you can see, the, uh, the carbon fiber gauge is in fact working. And um, so is this one. Let's just connect one last time. I'm adding unnecessary fat to the end of the video. But as you can see, stupid quick connections, which is why I was so confused as to why it didn't connect, but it did. So I can actually confirm that it is okay. And I am not having a small heart attack over the price of these gauges. Um, 200 bucks, go get yourself one of these professional ones. If you do want a carbon fiber one, hold off for a little bit. I'm trying to reach out to them to find out exactly how long potentially that's gonna take. But once I find out more information, I will try to get my hands on one to do a side-by-side -side comparison, carbon fiber gauge versus carbon fiber gauge, so we can see, you know, if there were any significant updates or upgrades or anything. And you'll find out when I find out. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll see you on the next one.